my kings and queens of the world. Welcome back to Queen of the Movies podcast. I'm Ronika Jade. So, as you see, I'm a little late when it comes to posting. Um, I really wasn't sure what movie I wanted to do. Um, and I had a lot going on. There was a lot going on. But um, I decided to do The Sandlot. Love that movie. Uh, came out in 93. It's a coming of age sports comedy. Um, pretty much just tells the story of a group of young baseball players during the summer of 1962. Now, one thing about that, I did not know that this was set in 1962. Had no idea. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. But definitely one of my my favorite movies watching growing up. I can still watch it. My son loves it. Um, great movie. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really going to do a spoiler alert on this because it was made in 93, like I said. So if you haven't seen it, um, well, it's either not your cup of tea or... I don't know. It's weird if you haven't seen it. But, you know, to each his own, right? There's been plenty of movies I haven't seen because I don't want to. But anyway, so the first one you meet. Well, let's start at the beginning, right? They have a narrator. And if you've seen it, you know, you know that the narrator is one of the main characters which is Scott, Scotty Smalls. So it's really about him. He moved to, I think it was like somewhere in California. Um, and he's morally focused on academics and engineering things. So like he builds stuff. And um, I guess he, I don't know, he, he, he feels awkward and he feels like he doesn't fit in, but it's like, well, are you even trying? Do you want to try? I guess is the question. But his mom um, pretty much encourages him, I guess you could say, to make friends. You know, don't sit in the house. You got to open yourself up to people so you can have friends. Um, so he's still, he's getting used to it, and then he's also getting used to the fact that, uh, I don't know, because he, he has a stepfather that he has no idea what to call him, he calls him Bill, he calls him Dad, uh, he's po baby, right, um, but he goes, he finds a group of kids, playing baseball on this sandlot. And um, he's just watching, but then a ball gets hit to him. And they're like, catch it, catch it. He couldn't catch it because he don't know how to catch. And then they're like, throw it back. But he can't throw either, so they make fun of him. All, everybody laughs at him except for Benny. So, yeah. That was his first encounter with them. And then after that, he tries to play catch with his stepfather, but then ends up getting um, hit in the face. So he gets a black eye. Oh, and mind you, he, um, he, he decides not to throw it. He at first rolls it, and then he just goes up to him and gives it, gives the ball back. Because I guess he just was embarrassed. Because, I mean... Who wouldn't be if someone's laughing at you and then you're trying to learn and then you get, you know, you just automatically get embarrassed again because you were just laughed at because you forgot to throw. But, um, Benny comes by. He walks past his house because they live pretty close to each other. Um, so, Benny walks past his house 
and is like, hey, what you doing? Let's go play. He's like, um, did you not see me before? It didn't go so great last time. <laughs> um, but he's like, come on, I got you. Let's go. He's like, well, my glove is busted. He said, that's fine. I got an extra one. So he goes, tells him to get into the, uh, what you call it? Tells him to go to, I think it was left field. I got it. Yeah, it was left field. No, he said left center. No, he told him to go to left, but he went to left center. That's what it was. That's right. But, um, anyway, he hits it to him. He doesn't catch it. They laugh. And then instead of throwing it, he runs it all the way back to the pitcher, who is um, Kenny Denunez. That's his character name. That's the character thing. And they're just like, did he just really run? It? And then he ran back. So Benny ran out there to give him a little bit of a pep talk. You know what I'm saying? Look, just a little bit of a pep talk. Like, you know you could throw it. And Scarlett is like, no, I can't. He's like, I shouldn't have came out here. I don't know how to play. And he's like, that's your problem. You thinking. Stop thinking. Just do it. And he's like, just put your put your glove up. I, I take care of the rest. Now, this is the part where I was just like, you just want him to stand there with his glove up? I played softball. Um, and I coach for a little bit. Um, I don't coach anymore, but it's not surprising. It's just like, um, what do you plan on doing? And then he hit it right to his glove. I was like, dang, Benny got some skills. What the world? He just hit it right to his glove. And everybody's just like, oh my God. And I'm like, he literally just stood there. Just stood there. But, you know, whatever. He, Benny got some nice skills when it comes to hitting the balls because I couldn't even do that. But, um, yeah, and then everybody's in shock. And then, you know, Benny told him what to do to throw it. And he did it. And they were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, um, you yeah, know, I thought, you know, that's a good, good representation, I guess, of what it's like to try to make friends. It's like, at first, it's just like, uh, who are you? And you kind of feel like an outsider and you don't fit in. But there's always that, well, it's not always, but if you just have that one person to stick up for you and say, no, he's he's cool. He's cool. And then, you know, they're like, well, well, he does this. And Benny, you know, Benny stuck up for him when they were talking about him. Like, he's a square. And then, you know, one of the characters, he said, uh, Benny was like, yeah, yeah, you run like a duck. Look, how, you don't even have room to talk. And then, yeah, yeah's like, but, but, and he was like, you're part of the team, right? Well, yeah, he said, so why can't he be? Why can't he be? So I really like that. Um, just a sense of belonging and having someone uh, see something in you that you probably don't even see in yourself, you know? So I think that was really good. He, you know, saw who he was and saw how, you know, that affected him. He probably could see he really didn't have no friends. So just someone being nice and accepting you for who you are, I think was a great message in in this you know you you don't have to pretend to be anybody you're not and I felt like he was on that journey throughout this movie and you know they all became really good friends um which like I said the sandline it was originally Supposed to be called the Boys of Summer. I'm so happy they changed the name. So happy because that is terrible. 
And apparently, they didn't keep the name because there was a book with the same title, so they couldn't do that. But, um, yeah. Also, um, apparently, it's a part, partly an autobiographical um, movie. It was inspired loose, I don't know how loose, but loosely inspired by the co-writer and director, David Mickey Evans. He also, um, oh no, his brother. It was the experience of his brother. But he was also the, the narrator in the movie. Um, also, it was only shot in 42 days, which is amazing because, I don't know. Now I feel like I'm going to have to rewatch it and see, like, if I, I don't know. That's crazy. 42 days. That wasn't a very long t- uh, time. Um, apparently the kids were supposed to be, like, 9 to 10 years old, but they aged them up. And I think that that was better because, I don't know, I feel like with what they were doing, they wouldn't have been able to um, do all of that. I don't know. I don't know. Nine to ten. That's like a big gap of like experience and and ability. I feel like. But anyway, um, they all become friends. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. They play ball. Whatever. They um end up playing these other kids that are like, they either do travel or rec ball that's like an official team and they like kill them in their, um, what do you call it, in their game, their little scrimmage. And uh, I think, I feel like that just goes to show like you don't need a fancy jersey, you don't need fancy things. And, you know, it doesn't mean that just because you're doing this, doesn't mean that the people over here are any less talented. Because it just went to show y'all may be on an official team and playing games, but these kids are on your level, but just a little bit better because just because they don't have someone teaching, they practice themselves. They probably watch. They watch baseball. You know, they learn from doing even though there's no like adult but they just love the game and they love to play and I think they took it they 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 took it seriously but not too seriously because they always want to have fun and I think that's why they always kept doing it because nobody took it to the point of serious that made it less fun you know what I'm saying so yeah Um, but, you know, I realized I never said all the characters' names, so I apologize. It's, it's not in it, because they only had eight at the time, and Smalls was the ninth, so that made them a complete team. So, the characters were Scott, Scotty Smalls, Benjamin, Benny, the Jet, Rodriguez, Hamilton Ham Porter, Michael Squint Paladoris, Alan Yeah Yeah McLennan, Kenny DeNunez, Bertram Grover Weeks, Timmy Timmons, Tommy Reapy Timmons. Yeah, and that was it. There was also a scene where they were trying to play, well, Benny wanted to play, and they was like, yo, it's hot. It's too hot. We not doing this. And they're like, well, what are you trying to do then? And they were like, oh. And they went to the pool. Having a good time. Squints gets the bright idea to jump in the deep end, even though he case one. Because he likes the, um, what is it? He likes the lifeguard. And I'm pretty sure that was uh, um, Shelton. Oh, what's her name? 
Who is her, is her whole name? Molly Shelton? No. Mary Shelton? Dang. Oh, she, the, 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 Wendy Peppercorn, that was the character's name. I was just trying to figure out the, her actual name, because I'm pretty sure it's like Molly or something, right? Marley, Marley Shelton, because she plays Judy Hicks in the uh, screen for But anyway, yes, he gets the right idea to jump in the deep end, and... You know, it seems like he's drowning. <laughs> she jumps in against him, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, oh, my God, squints. Oh, my God, please be okay. Please be okay. Oh, my God. It's my bestie. And then all of a sudden, they look at him, and he's um, <laughs> he just looks at them and smiles. And they're like, what? What's going on? And then when he, she's trying to, which by this time, I feel like she should be able to feel a heartbeat. Like, come on out. What is going on? Maybe she wouldn't pay attention. I ain't never been a lifeguard. Will never be a lifeguard. I can't swim. So, that won't happen. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and then he grabs her and, like, just kisses her. Whole harassment. So, he gets kicked out. They can't never come back. Sucks for them. I would be so upset with Squints. Because I'm like, now what am I going to do for the summer? I can't come swim because of you. How dare you? Um, but, you know, they have a night game for the 4th of July, which was cool. Um, Squint, uh, there's a part. Now, here it comes with, like, I guess you say the climax of the movie. I don't know. Not yet, but almost. Where Ham, no, it was Benny, hit the ball so hard that the, the, the guts came out, or that it, like, separated itself. And then uh, Smalls was like, I mean, I have a ball. And they're like, they go get it, fool. Because they were like, I don't have money for a ball. They didn't have no change for a ball. I think a ball was like 50 cents. And they didn't have money for that. But we got to remember, this is 62. Or was it 25 cents? I don't know. But in this day and age, everybody got a quarter. But almost everybody. But, um, yeah, man. <laughs> so... Smalls goes and gets his stepdad's ball that is signed by Babe Ruth. <sighs> I remember when I first seen this scene. I was just like, what in the hell are you doing? Why would you get that ball? But you know what? It's like, okay. Um, huh. You're young. Just to you, it's just a ball. You don't know why your stepdad has this in a in a a case to protect it. Cause I mean, he of course would never have anything valuable in there. I roll my eyes. Sorry, you can't see me. But um, yeah. <laughs> and so he goes. They play with it. He hits. They're like, "Your ball, you hit. Go." On. Hits a home run. Amazing. First time he ever did it right? Okay. And they're like, man, well, it's gone. And he's like, I'll just go get it. And then they are doing something to where they don't see him walking over there. And when they do, he's about, he's like halfway up the fence. And they're like, no! No! <laughs> So they get him down. He's like, what is wrong with y'all? And they're just like, bruh, it's the beast. What do you mean? Are you trying to die? And he's just like, um, I don't know what y'all talking about. That's all crazy. And then he was like, y'all, I'm so serious. We have to go get that ball. It's not mine. They're like, what do you mean? It's my stepdad's. I was, he was like, no, like, seriously, 
it was signed by somebody. It had like some chick signed it. And they're like, who? They said someone named Baby Ruth. And they're like, Babe Ruth. They go, they're like, dang, the beast got it. They were like, why would you do that? He was like, who, who is Baby Ruth? Who is she? And they're like, the Sultan of Slip. Okay. The Great Bambino, as Ham would say. And he's like, oh, my God. That's the same person? Yeah. He ain't know nothing about baseball. He ain't know nothing. He just knew he he was playing with some friends and he learned some stuff. But anyway, I feel like in that moment, they could have just went <coughs> and got the ball. But, well, the way they set it up, it was like, oh, no, we can't just because of squints. It's all because of squints. They had their camp out, which was cool. Had s'mores. And Smalls was like, what's that? Do I want some more of what? He was like, no, do you want a s'more? He was like, I don't get it. How can I have some more of nothing? <laughs> Killing me, Smalls. Anyway. Yeah, that's, they had the whole, um, what do you call it? Squints tells that whole made up story about the, Beast and the owner of the beast. His name is Mr. Mister Mur- Mr. Myrtle. But something I did like when they were trying to get the ball back because they had like a little plan. He was making up plans to get the ball back. And one thing I did like that they did um, for that, like that, the direction and uh, whatnot was when they were not each kid, but it was, I think, three different, they had different plans, which was all creative, you know, any, any way it would have worked, uh, but everybody saw the beast differently, like, the beast did not look the same to everybody, you know, but that part where they had that big old animal try to puppet dog come up when they was trying to do the launcher of the ball and he came up and ate it I was like yo that is wild <laughs> in this case because that's in their head that's what they saw so we're seeing in the point of view of the kids which I thought was cool because when you see the beast you know he's just he's just a regular dog I mean he's a big dog but he's not as big as they saw so you can see I like how they made it to where we're seeing in the point of view of kids and what they're scared and how everything is a little bit blown out of proportion with anybody that's really anybody anybody is scared and their senses are heightened remember things a little bit differently a little bit more drastic so like I guess, like, when you're, like, I'm scared of spiders. So, to me, what is huge is not huge to somebody else. But, yeah, I I just like that we saw the beast in the point of view of them. When they were trying to get the ball back and making up all these plans. Um, And like I said, Squints is the one that's like, no, we can't just go knock on his door. What are you talking about? Um, But, yeah. Also, there's a part in the movie where those kids are doing chewing tobacco. And I was like, now that makes sense of the year. That makes way more sense now. Wow. Epiphany. Okay. Um, That part was so gross. Like when they threw up and everything. This is how you know children should not be doing these things because look how that ended up. They don't know what they don't know what they're doing. They probably ate something crazy, like a chili dog or something. They just threw up on everybody. But um, the chewing tobacco was made of licorice and bacon bits, so I wonder how that tastes. Because to me, that sounds real nasty. 
like super gross. Because I don't like licorice. And I don't eat pork. But um, also the vomit was a mixture of split pea soup, baked beans, oatmeal, water, and gelatin. Interesting. But anyway. Um, they... Uh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's okay. Anyway. Once they... They do all the plans. They blew up the tree house, basically. Um, not really, but kind of blew... It was a vacuum cleaner blew up, right? And so, you know, that failed. They're like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. We, it's not going to... We just not gonna get that ball. You gonna have to deal with that. You just got to be in trouble. And then Benny has a dream where he sees Babe Ruth. Dude, they chose did look like Babe Ruth. I was like, wow, that's a really good, uh, good casting there. Super good. Um, but it's like, oh, just go get it. And so, um. Yeah, he went. He got everybody up. He's like, ah, come. Come to the sand lot. Come on. They're like, yo, it's so early. What the heck? But they go. Anyway. And, oh yeah, he puts on like his real good converses, I guess. Cause, but anyway, it made me think of um, Georgia the Jungle, which I think Georgia the Jungle came out after this movie. I'm pretty sure. So, um, I guess the Georgia Jungle made me think of that when he put on those shoes. But, uh, yeah, it was made after this film. But anyway, he's like, I'm just going to go get the ball. I'm going to jump over and get the ball. Okay? So he does. They have like a, what's it called? Like a, a roulette? It's not roulette. Chicken. He goes, he slides, ah, I got it. Boom, right? Jumps back over. He's like, whew, I got it. See, simple as that. All of a sudden, the dog, the dog jump over the fence, and this is crazy, like, chasing. Dog is chasing Benny, and they're just running with him. But, um, yeah, it was long. They went through a, they went through a beach, a picnic. A uh, little carnival, a, lo a super long table, all that food. Oh my God. I was like, all that food gone to waste, gonna be in the trash because a dog and a kid decided to run on the table. Out of it, so mad. A huge cake was uh, ruined because of that. Oh my goodness. But it was, it was uh, they even went through a, like a little movie playing. I don't know. But it was like they had a projector and they was playing a movie and they crashed that the the dog had went through the screen. I'd have been mad at that too. But that was a super long chase scene. And they still ended up back at Sandlot. And then Benny jumps the fence again. And then the dog tries to blah 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 blah. Fence falls on the dog. So Scott is like Y'all help me get this thing off of the dog. Please help me. Help me, please. Help me, please. They're just like, oh, fine. Get the dog out. And then he, like, licks um, Scotty's face. So about that, he was, um, the dog, like, well, they put, um, like, stuff on Smalls' face. What was it? Baby food on one half of, of Smalls' face. So when there you see one side of his face, the other face is smeared in goo, and that's why the and that's um, how they had the dog to lick his face like that. I would not be doing that. That's disgusting. Um, you know, to each his own. It just wouldn't be me. Um, and then they go return the dog. And then Mr. Myrtle is just like, 
Oh, thanks. You could have just knocked on the door. I would have got it for you. And they were like, ah, squints. And I would have been the same way. Squints, come on now. We could have, we didn't have to go through all this. But anyway, they see all this like paraphernalia. I'm pretty sure that's what you say. Paraf no, not paraphernalia. They see all of this, all of these things that's in Mr. Myrtle's house. And he has pictures and news paper clippings. He has, like I said, pictures of, uh, like, the Yankees back then and whatever. Babe Ruth. Um, and there's, like, a picture that's supposed to be him with Babe Ruth and stuff. And then he gives Smalls. He's like, hey, I'll trade you for this. Uh, I'll trade you this one for this one. He's like, and Smalls like, I don't think you understand. Like, that one is signed by Babe Ruth. And then, uh, Mr. Myrtle's like, yeah, so it's this one. And and the rest of the Yankees in that, uh, it's like, what? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at this name. Look at that name. Look at that name. Look at that name. So, he was in trouble now for ruining that ball because he told his stepdaddy. And he was like, but I have this. He was like, mm, mm, okay. You're still grounded, but thank you. So, there's that. Um, and then it's like a little montage of what they did after, you know, they grew up. This person went away. This person became a wrestler. The great Hambino. Mm -hmm. Then you see Smalls. He is now a sports commentator. And Benny the Jet Rodriguez is a professional baseball player. So, you know, they're still friends and all of that. But, I, you know, I thought it was a good way to end it. You know, it wasn't too long. It wasn't too short. I, I love the movie. I think um, the way they um, – shot it mostly in the perspective of kids like if you were a kid this is this is how you would see it this is how you would you know like react to it uh, especially when it came to the dog uh yeah i would think like uh, if i were to give it stars like out of five i'd probably give it like a like a three and a half four you know, obviously, you know, it's not perfect. I don't think any movie is really perfect. But for what it is and when it came out, I think it was really well done. And it's just a good family movie. It's a great family movie. that, And I'm glad that my son <coughs> loves that movie. He watched, I think he's seen it almost as much as me. <laughs> as many times as I've seen it. And he's only seven. So, you know, he 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 knows that movie like the back of his head too. So, um yeah, it's nice to be able to share those movies with you know, our kids and show them what we loved as a child. And the fact that they take to that is really great. Um but yeah, The Sandlot, really good movie, um, good family movie. You know, if, if you're looking for, like, Oscar-worthy movies, then this is not the movie for you. But if you just want to sit down, watch anything about sports, and like I said, it's family oriented, then this would be a good movie to watch. You know, especially I don't know, with the kids so they can so they can see what we liked in that in that time and see if they will cherish it as much as we did. So uh, yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh sorry it I got it and late. Like I said, a lot was going on, and I just recorded this, so hopefully it's okay. 
next week will be a little bit better, you know? Well, it'll be a lot better. Hopefully I get it in on time is what I'm saying. Um, But thank you for joining me again. This is Queen of the Movies Podcast.